Okay, I'm here working on my uh, Honda Odyssey again, and uh, I have no idea where I left off last time. I kind of got a little distracted um, doing a couple other things while I was here on the weekend, and uh, I ended up accomplishing a couple things though that I'll potentially bring up the speed on, or maybe it'll be a repeat. I don't know. Um, I got the carburetor all in there and whatnot. I got the air filter on there. I made an air filter element and oiled it up. Um, as you can see. Um, so that's good to go. Um, at some point I'll have to take the carburetor back off and shave this motor mounting plate a little bit. Um, I, it's probably because it's mounted freely as opposed to being attached. In a snowmobile there would normally be a big air box that this would get um, squished into and it would probably pull the engine up off of that but the way that's on there now it just just touches this so I should um, take this off real quick and uh, grind some of that down there so it doesn't rub because eventually it'll spring a leak in this bowl. Anyways, um, I got that done. I blocked off and removed the oil injection so I will be doing pre-mix in this engine as opposed to having it be oil injection. Um, there's a little, actually I could show you. <clears throat> This gear gets driven um, by a little PTO type thing. It's not like a true PTO, but it's that kind of thing in here. Um, there's a big rotary valve in here, and off of that there's a gear that drives that gear I just showed you, which then drives this little pump, and that would pump oil um, out of an external tank somewhere and then squirt it into the gas that's coming from the carburetor this way. Um, for insurance's sake and reliability's sake because I have no idea the condition of this pump or anything else I'm gonna just pre-mix my gas directly from the tank so it's already oiled when it gets to here and then it'll squirt the right amount of oil and gas into the engine <clears throat> um, so aside from removing the gear that drives this pump I just blocked off all of the lines so there's no more vacuum leaks and made a block off line over here that's sealed and whatnot so there's no air leaks um, cleaned it up a little bit and put it back on um, I got a couple parts to help finish the project along um, one of which is this brand new throttle cable that I was just working on attaching that attaches here kinda like that I'll need to add another spring here potentially and uh, I was looking at ways of how to route it and mount it and connect it to my snowmobile engine throttle cable. Um, so I'm going to have to look for a couple things and uh, get back to working on that. Alright, so the other things that I have aren't super exciting, but they are important. Um, I have some fuel filters and some shutoffs, um, which actually I guess the filters and the shutoffs are actually kind of important for the way that I have that set up. Um, but this is just some new uh, nuts for the uh, steering wheel, even though it's not really a wheel. Um, so that will take care of that. And I don't really have an excuse not to ride it after that, to be completely honest with you. I'm still missing a gas cap. I need to find a gas cap for that. Hopefully I can find one that will kind of be universal enough that it will work. Um, so yeah, um, like I was saying, the, the, gas, the fuel filter and shutoff is actually kind of important because there will always, if there's fuel in the tank, there will always be pressure down in that line that will want to feed past the needle in the seat down to the carburetor, and if that ever fails, it will fill the carburetor all the way up, and it will fill the engine all the way up with gas, too. So that would be kind of bad. And fuel filter, I mean, that's important for filtration purposes. I mean, you wouldn't want to ruin that engine that I have no idea what the condition of it is already. Okay, uh, so it's actually the next day. Uh, yesterday, I um, ended up working on a different project. And, uh, yeah. So anyways, uh, the last thing I believe I was talking about was the throttle cable, um, which I do have hooked up now. Um, I did buy a replacement throttle cable for one of these Honda Odysseys. 
and um, have now installed it. So it has a nice hookup over here, it has a channel and whatnot, and a way to route the cable all the way down the frame, which is all hunky dory. It comes up over there, I have it zip tied right here, because um, it is still going to be a little bit redneck at least. And uh, then I had to then connect it to the throttle cable for the snowmobile engine, which is what I accomplished here with one of these crimp um, connections. Um, now I've already checked, I do have full throw of my throttle cable and it snaps back nice. <clears throat> I'll give you a little bit of a shot over here. That's this right here is a throttle cable. Works good enough for this thing, for now anyways. Then I also installed the fuel filter and the fuel shutoff over there. Um, so yeah. Uh, next thing I'm going to work on is some is some wiring over here. I got the battery and a little battery box down there. Um, so wiring wise, I don't really have a whole lot that needs to be wired. Um, at some point, I might end up getting some. LED lights for it to mount um, probably up here or maybe down there wherever um, and that'll take some juice um, but the only thing that I actually have that is electric is actually the fan that does need power to operate of course so I'm just gonna create a simple wiring harness set up right now um, so I can have a switch for the fan probably over there um, That'll turn the fan on, obviously. And, uh, yeah. Oh, I also need to figure out the kill switch situation for the coil pack. Because um, I would need a way to, uh, you know, kill the engine, of course. So, yeah, i got to do that. And, um, yeah. So, I mean, wiring is kind of basic and boring, so I'm probably not going to really film it. But I shall continue. <clears throat> Okay, I'm back here doing stuff and things on the uh, Odyssey project, um, and I believe I've pointed it out, and if I haven't, too bad. Um, this is a brand new ignition coil for the uh, Rotax 467 engine that I have plopped in that chassis now. Um, if I haven't pointed it out, what's um, taking place is through storage, and being taken in and out of probably a couple different projects in its life. Um, the coil wires have become completely disheveled and are in need of replacement. So I went ahead and just bought a brand new coil for that engine. They weren't terribly expensive, so I just got a new one. And um, these particular ignition coils that they had on that engine fit a couple different uh, engines uh, it's you know because I guess there's nothing really special about this particular ignition coil and uh, because of that when you buy a new one it doesn't come with the uh, little booties and um, connections to go to a spark plug so I have to um, do that part myself which you know in some ways is an advantage because I get to choose the length of my um, spark plug wires. So, uh, that's what I'm going to be working on now. I figure just as a refresher I'll point you at the engine itself. This is that coil. The uh, wires themselves are kind of rough looking and um, you know like this this boot over here is completely missing um, and falling out of the wire. Uh, this one is also cracked and smashed and you can also see that the uh, spark plugs themselves the little electrodes are bent and that's due to storage so that's also why um, fuck. that's also why I have some brand new sparklers um, these are BR not or the or what's on I should let me back up for a second what's in the engine now are BR eights um, so they're pretty cheap, these NGK spark plugs for snowmobile engines, if you've never bought them before, they're a couple bucks. 
So I have a brand new set of E8s. Um, I also have some BR9s if I run into problems where it's following the spark plugs out because it's too hot or too cold or something like that. I have nines that I can swap them out if the eights don't work. Which, you know, is not uncommon to switch back and forth to a hotter or colder plug depending on the conditions outside. But I have both right now to start with. So I've decided to change my perspective a little bit and I'm actually gonna take the old coil off and put the new coil in place so that I have a better chance at getting a custom length to my plug wires right as opposed to measuring it here then transferring my measurements over to the bench. So, so I'm dropping parts on the ground and removing the factory or the coil pack that's at least on the engine right now. I have no idea if this coil pack has been changed before or, um, or anything really. I've never actually had this engine running and when I did some horse trading to get it with my buddy, <clears throat> all he told me is that it has good compression. So I think it runs but I don't actually know. And to be honest I don't even know if this is the proper location for these plugs. They very well could be flip-flopped on me, and I don't know yet. But I'll find that out when I try and start it the first time. Oh, boy. And I'm dropping parts and pieces all over the place. I lost the spacer already. Where the fuck did it go? Well. I'm assuming there was a, uh... This black wire right here was sort of on a, just a ring terminal onto the coil. I'm assuming that this goes to what the kill switch would do. Just ground the coil out like a normal lawnmower, but I don't actually know. But I'm assuming that's why that was there. But I gotta find that stupid spacer, so I'll be back in a couple minutes. Okay, dokey. I've got the new coil in hand here, kinda. I've got some thread locker I'm gonna use on the little bolties. And yeah, I guess I'm gonna give this a little bit of install. Oops, wrong way. Right there, or something like that. Uh, let's go with let's go with the top one first. Put a little dab of some thread lock on there. Of course, it's gonna be red, so I'll never be able to get it off again. Uh, Let's see, hold that up like that, something, yes, feed it through the spacer thing, get a couple threads caught or something, I guess, okay, next one, Put another dab of thread, thre uh, red thread locker so I can't ever remove it again. Get that up out of the way. Feed it through the bottom, I guess. And then get the spacer on something. Then go to the side of the engine. Get a couple threads caught here and then go to town. Go to town, they say. <clears throat> Something like that, I guess. That feels nice and tight. It is only aluminum. So I don't want to go shithead tight or I'll strip the fuck out of it. I guess. So, I mean, it looks like it only plugs in one way. The ignition coil that came off of here was plugged in the exact same way. So I'm going to just plug that one in just like so. You can see that, I don't know. Probably didn't see that, but there you go. <clears throat> She's plugged in. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, decide on what length I want. I'm gonna make them equal length, and then figure out which one goes where, and then mark it with, I don't know, 
somewhere down here I'll mark it with one or two and then I'll go one, two or something. So now comes the fun part where I get to cut my brand new coil wires. Uh, so I'm gonna make them match the, uh, or I'm gonna make it, I'm gonna make the one length like I was talking about before. I'm gonna make it the length they would have to be for the further cylinder. So I could very well do this if I really wanted to, but I think it should be a little bit shorter at least. So I'm gonna go ahead and do, um, I'm gonna go ahead and do, uh, I'm gonna do this length right here. So, um, I have, like I said, I have a couple, uh, things to actually make it, but to do the length, what I'm going to do is just cut it right there, give myself a little bit extra, there we go. So next, I need to cut a half inch back of three layers of sheathing. There's the loose outer layer, then there's the black layer, and then there's a white layer. You probably can't see what I'm doing, but I just have a razor blade out and I'm cutting away the loose sheathing right now. <clears throat> okay. My Harbor Freight knife isn't happy about this, but it's gonna do it. So next thing I'm going to do is uh, feed the wire into my boot here a little bit. Uh, I need to remove something more here maybe. This will just make it easier later. It's a little silicone spray. Get that rubber nice and slippery. <clears throat> okay, so anyways, back to where we were. Once you have the wire stripped out of it, if you're dealing with a car or something else, you would normally have black sheathing inside of there, but all you do is bend the wire over the side, take your crimp connector, um, slide it over there so it comes in contact with that wire. Don't go too far. But one trick that I read into or watched is if you bend the little teeth over, it allows it to have a much better grip. So you gotta take and squish her in there nice make sure that you have the wire in contact not too too far and then I used some vice grips to give her a crimp all the way around there is a special tool to do this so I of course don't have that tool but vice grips pliers and a knife seem to do just as good of a job test tug but <clears throat> there you go so then where I started to do before but didn't get to was just kind of spray over there some hill of silicone spray and then I can slip this bitch right over there no problem hunky dory and then it goes in there you can't see that but there's a thing in there uh, that's how I did it with these um, I sort of got stuck in the middle and had to you know try a different method that's why I kind of skipped ahead but works good I've got it figured out for those then this little extra bit of flaps so I just kind of cut off but uh. that's how I did it on this one your results will probably vary <laughs> 